Hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Look at this, I got a box of stuff. That's right, I got two boxes of stuff, but the big box here is what this video is all about. So as always, let's get down to the shop so we can open this up and have another episode of the stuff. Alrighty gang, how y'all doing? You doing good? Awesome. Oh man, okay, that's not very heavy but awkward. Oh, so again, another episode of the stuff, and yes, the title always gives it away. Gotta have them catchy thumbnails, too, of course. So, you already know it's in this box, don't you? It's just not fair sometimes. Um, reason why this ain't a big deal is this is a bunch of the Kydex and everything, but this is the thumbnail for the today. Yes, this I have been looking for, forward to for a while. I didn't know what to use. I wasn't sure, you know, what kind of compressor to get uh, because, as you guys know, when I did my my video when uh, uh, Ben and I went out to Eastern Washington and we hit the trails, I forgot that uh, our little compressor we had, we had a little cheapo one, uh, was my wife took it and she had it in her Buick and I didn't have it when we hit the trail, so if I aired down, I couldn't air back up. And then when we had that flat, which I think I lost some of that video, uh, I plugged the flat tire, but I could only get up with, and then I used the can and I fixed the flat stuff. And I only had 14 PSIs, and I still had to get to from the trailhead all the way down the trail, or from the trail itself down to the trailhead, and then out to Ellensburg, Washington to get a, a tire changed. And I couldn't do that. So we got down and we changed that tire, but the spare was also half flat. So I drove on a 32 or something, 30 PSI tire when normally I would have 45, I think it was, and I had to drive 50, 60 miles down the highway to get to the tire place so I could get everything repaired because that was literally the closest place. I was right smack dab in the middle of the bunch of tire places, so it was going straight to Ellensburg in the direction we had to go to Walla Walla to get the uh, knife grinder from uh, Thaddeus at Black Fox Knife Works, um, or head back up the pass and everything and try to find some place there. But anyhow, so I didn't know what to get. I know everybody's got these ARBs. And I was like, okay, well, the ARB, I can't do an onboard mount right now. It, and that fancy stuff, that's just not the budget. Um, and I wanted something that maybe um, it was a little bit more portable for my needs at this time. And so I was looking at a whole bunch of different ones. ARB makes a little portable kit. And uh, I was looking at, um, oh, I forgot the other company names. But what did, what did I do? What do you do when you look for something? You come to YouTube, of course, or you go to people that know it who are in the overlanding community. And what better resource did I have but to reach out to Lolo Overland Outfitting. That's right. They're down in Portland, Oregon. I reached out to the gang over there and contacted Josh, and I told him what my needs were, kind of like what I was looking for, and he turned around and hooked me up with this. That's right. I've been looking forward to this for some time now. Oh, I just probably opened it up upside down, but I don't think it's an issue. But I thought this would be nice. I mean, the Blue Dog. Now, I didn't know anything about Blue Dog, but Josh actually had this compressor when he first started out getting into overlanding and everything. He used to run this uh, compressor until he upgraded to an ARB with its permanently mounted and all that. You know, all the what the cool kids have. <laughs> but this here he hooked me up with. I just got it in today, so I wanted to do the video. And a big shout out to Josh and the guys over at Lola Overland. Thank you so much for the support. This was awesome. Um, so I'm doing this unboxing. I want to share this with you because I know there's a lot of guys that are watching this channel right now that, what do you do? What do you want to do? What do you want to get when you're getting into overlanding or some, maybe some off-road uh, glamping, camping, maybe some weekend landing kind of stuff? Um, what do you want to do to get into it? And you want to get a lot of things. You want to get a whole bunch of stuff because overlanding is like walking into a candy store. It literally, you can spend umpteen thousands of dollars on it, but what is it that you really need? And do you really need the ARB? Uh, or could you get something a little less expensive that will work for you and your vehicle? And depending on how many times you're going out and how much you're airing down. Now, I've never used one of these before, so I can't say that this is the end all be all. It probably does have its limitations because companies like ARB wouldn't have such a great product and such a expensive product if it wasn't for the quality of the materials they have. So this might have its limitations if you're going to be airing up, you know, two, three, four times a weekend 
every weekend for a whole year. You might burn this out. Maybe you might be burning out. You might burn it out because of you're going to do two or three vehicles or something. I don't know, guys. I am not the person to go to. I just want to show you there's a less expensive option than ARB, and it's a portable one, so you can take it to your vehicle and maybe take it to some, pass it on to somebody else. They can use it on their vehicle. I thought that would be kind of nice. So uh, plus, it's something maybe I can use. The kids can take out a truck to do something here around the house as well, instead of taking my big compressors out. So uh, let's get to unboxing this and see what is inside this kit and how it all looks. So opening the box up, let's turn this around. Really well packaged, it was really good to go. Oh, here we go right there, see, perfect, right there, boom. See, 37 inch tires, so there you have it. There's a little picture of it. Um, I thought it was kind of neat too, because it's, it's blue and you know, CK knife and tool, the colors are blue. Uh, really well packaged. All right, so here we go. Nice carry bag. Okay, right off the bat. Let's see. I don't even know how much it says Is there a weight in this? I don't know if it tells you a weight. I would have to look maybe on the show. Okay, here we go 19 19.8 pounds so this this compressor is around 19 pounds um, Yeah, it feels about that it feels that but I don't think it's an issue bags really nice It's got a cool little uh, patch here. Hey, Bulldog winch. This would make a good overland patch, guys. It's a nice uh, PVC patch. That would be awesome to have as a. Hmm. Yeah, I should cut that off and put it on my put it inside the truck. That'd be really cool. So, or hey, Bulldog winch. You see this? Send me a patch. Send me a patch. All righty here. So, hose. All right. Uh, nothing. Nothing of interest. You know, no big issue there. Um, the quick connect here. That looks good. Uh, we'll play with that a little bit. Uh, let's see here. This is a valve. Okay, ah, it's going to take some time to get used to everything. Yeah, and I have never used one of these. But let's see here. Bubble wrapped all up. There's your gauge. So you got your pressure gauge right here. Okay, they sent me a little, they sent me an empty crack, uh, crack bag. So this bag is what you'd put your crack or methamphetamines in. No, don't do that. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, I think something fell out of it. Yeah, there we go. See, that fell out of the bag. Uh, so there's the nozzle, there's the quick release for you. So this goes to your tire. This will be what you fill it up with. Screw, oh, look at that. See, see, so simple a Marine can do it. All right, that screws in. This is my connector there. Good stuff, it gives you a gauge. So when you connect, you're gonna know how much PSIs are in your tire, how much you're filling it to. Sweet. This is a nozzle. So I'm gonna take the tire part off. I'll take the tire part off here. And you're going to attach this. Look at that. You'll attach this, and this is what you'd fill up those inflatables that the kids like to float around on at the lake. So that's cool. All right, let's take this bag out. Oh, yep, see, that's what happened. See, the crack bag broke open. My little crack bag broke open, and that's what was left over. They gave me a piece of uh, lint material. Throw that away. Okay, we have our... Our basketball inflator that I just dropped. So of course, when you're out overlanding and you want to play some football or basketball, you got an inflator. There's a longer stem. Oh, there you go. A longer stem for filling up the tools. And I have no idea what this is for. I don't have any clue because it's threaded out here to screw into this, but then that's threaded in there. So I'm not sure what that's for. I will have to look that up. It's a little tiny gold thing, but it's threaded on the inside of that. There's a little O-ring right there, and then it's threaded, so. Bag's nice, uh, you got a little pocket on the inside. Um, it's got like a really thin something at the bottom of this. Um, probably a plastic, it's been sewn in. Nice bag, uh, you know, it's nothing fancy, but it'll probably hold up for a while. Alrighty, and I just ripped my bubble wrap, but who cares? Oh, that is sexy looking. Okay, let's get this out of your way. Okay. Nice. All right. So good bulldog winch. I mean, it feels really nice. This is this is perforated, and the reason why it's perforated is because I bet you that pipe on the inside gets pretty toasty. That's slick. That is nice. So what are we doing here? Where are we going to connect and fill up? So that's the port to fill it in. Okay, so we're connected there. That's all good to go. There's a reset button there, your power button right here. Pressure release valve is right here. And we have our cables. Oh, alligator cables. And the alligator cables are looking pretty good. Uh, they got a really good spring to them. Like I say, it's a really tight spring. It's not 
soft and squishy. This has got a good positive squeeze to it. That's nice. They're all copper. Everything's copper all through into the handle. Uh, but it feels really good. It doesn't seem like that spring will give away. That's got a good, good feel to it. Uh, cables are nice. I'm not sure of the gauge. You'd have to look it up, but it's a thicker coating. I bet you it's probably maybe 14 gauge inside this. Uh, depending on the coating, this could be about a 14 gauge wire, maybe 12, but uh, that's not too bad. But of course, when you use this, you want to make sure your vehicle's running. So I guess the next thing we do is we can go out and test it on trip. Perfect side too. Battery. So when you're using your vehicle like this and you're doing everything, be careful, use caution, read the directions. I'm kind of familiar with the basics of stuff, but I should be reading the directions. Well, I guess I gotta take air out of his tire first and then to put air in it. So let's deflate his tire and then reinflate it. See, this is what you get for not reading directions. Connect your hot nozzle, connect it on there, and then guess what? You push the little button on the back of this, and it airs you down. Okay, as you see, we're down to 25 PSI's, and I think that's a pretty safe off-road operating tire pressure for myself. Again, these tires can be max inflated at 80. These are an E-rated 275-70R18. These are E-rated tires. So, um, with that being said, we'll go ahead and hook the compressor up, and let's see how long it takes us to fill up one tire from 25 PSI's to 60 PSI's. Alrighty, let's get it fired up and see how it works. actually not too loud. I'm talking pretty much at a normal voice with you guys and you could probably hear it off to my right. It's not that loud so let's start airing up. Okay well there's a... <laughs> I didn't plan. Read the directions dang nabbit. Well what I ended up doing is I gotta find my air tire gauge. There it is. What I did is I actually I had the tire gauge already connected to the tire when I started the compressor up it automatically started filling the tire. So when I turned around to go to start the clock, the tire was already filled, sorry about that. The tire was already full, so I think we're already at 60 PSI's. So I wanna check to see how accurate this is. So 40. So my gauge says I'm at 48 PSI's. Yeah, I, this is showing me about that same. This is showing about 40, 45 PSI actually. So that gauge says 48, this says 45. I, uh, we'll have to start it up and see, start the compressor back up again. Okay, so I just checked the tires. Uh, yeah, the gauge inside the truck showed this tire at 62. So I just let it out just a little bit of 60. Now, here's the downfall with this. Uh, the first thing is, and those, uh, it's not bad on Bulldog. It's just that I have the lift on trip now, so what ended up happening is when I connected them to the battery and I had the pump down here, I couldn't stretch the positive up to connect. So I had to put the pump up on top of the truck in order to connect everything. Uh, the second thing is too, is really quick, I just had to, the cables actually divide. So as you see the cables here, the wires, these here can actually be divided and uh, um, they were too tight together, so I, I just stretched them apart and that worked out okay. But I had to put the pump up above in order to access it. That just created another problem, which was when I had the gauge against the tire <clears throat> and I was filling it up, I have to come up here and press the on-off power switch to, pile, to, to pump the tire and then shut it off to check the tire pressure. So that's those two couple 
downfalls right off the bat. Really quiet, it's light, I gotta say that, so that's a good thing. So far, so good, like I said, I think the deflating process um, is probably, um, I think the deflator, to deflate your tires to go on a trail, that could probably be better. I would maybe recommend getting something different than what they're giving you as an alternative. That would take a long time, especially with my tires, to go from 60 to 25 PSIs. Um, with four tires, that would take a long time to deflate. With that said, it's not a game changer. It's just something I already have a couple little things, or maybe I'll look at something else. I'll do some research. What might be the best way to deflate them? Is it the end all be all? It would be something that would be a deal breaker. I don't think so, because again, guys, you're dealing with um, something that is gonna give you what you need at the moment and not break the bank. And it has a fairly good reputation. And as it says, Josh wouldn't been recommending to get to me and Lolo wouldn't be you know, sending me one if it was a piece of junk. So I'm gonna give them the, the benefit of the doubt and the kudos for that one. And uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and it's just gonna take time, just like a lot of the other tools that I do reviews on, it's just gonna take time. Uh, so hopefully this didn't go out too long, it wasn't too drawn out. Uh, again, Josh, Lolo Overland, everybody, thank you very much. Tristan and Josh, Tristan with Forbidden Off-Road. Look these guys up on YouTube and Instagram. You can find them underneath that, Lolo Overland. Uh, and I believe uh, Lolo Overland, it's Lolo, L-O-L-O, -O -O 4WD.com. So I'll put the links down below in the description box. But again, Tristan, Josh, everybody at Lolo Overland, thank you very much for the support. I appreciate this. This is going to work out really good. This is a nice piece of kit, and it's definitely something that is going to be in the truck from here on out. No one's taking it. Mama's got her own now. So everybody else, thank you very much. Like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. Keep me from the bottom of the YouTube bucket. We'll see you on the next video. Take care.